Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back on our XJ project. <laughs> and we're gonna be doing our four link conversion. So we're getting rid of the leaf springs. We're gonna get that sterling ton and a half bolted up. Here's kind of like the base of our product here. With any of our kits when you're buying stuff, first thing you need to do, print out your instructions. It's got a full parts checklist. It goes by box number, what should be in the box, the hardware kits with the numbers and the quantities. So go through that checklist before you do anything. Make sure it's all there. If it's not, give me a call. I'll get the right stuff sent out to you. We'll get it figured out. But it's way easier to have all your stuff figured out before you're halfway through an install realizing you're missing a hardware kit or something like that. So we've got our control arm cross member that's going to get bolted in. Um, we've got our super beefy lower control arms. They have a ground clearance bend in them. They are 5 16 wall, 2 inch, which is also thicker than quarters. So these are mega beef. We've got our upper control arms. We've got our spring or our coil pad and shock mount cross member and a couple male ends that we need to um, get our flex joints installed in and uh, get this stuff oriented. We'll grab our hardware kits, kind of figure out what needs to go where. We'll start our install. So we just got done installing all of our flex joints. Um, we've done it in plenty of videos. So if you have any concerns or want to know how to install them, you have any questions, check out the video. Um, so we got these ready to go. We are going to start with getting our uh, control arm cross member in, but as you can see, we're pretty deep into this project. We got our full frame stiffener, front, mid, and rear sections in. We've got our axle prep ready to go. So we got a couple things we got to cut out of our way to get the disassembly process done so we can start mounting in our new hardware. So we're going to get this cat cut out. We got to get our e brake cable cut out, and then we can start mounting in the cross member. All our prep's done. Now we can start measuring and getting our um, control arm cross member in. So what we're shooting for, before we stuff this up here, just to get a visual here, this is our OE rear cross member bolt. So we're gonna be measuring from center of here, 12 inches back. And that's gonna be the start of our front hole or front hole for our cross member. So we got a training jack. It's easier to do by yourself since camera guy's lazy. We'll get that kind of situated, we'll get it marked, and then we'll start drilling some holes. Every video, I just gotta throw a jab at you until I can get some people commenting. <laughs> Camera guy is busy. <laughs> so we gotta come back just a hair. And we scooch you back. So we've got our 12 inches from our bolt hole center um, to our front bolt hole on both sides, so that'll help get it level this way. And then you just got to bump a measurement in here to the outside of your frame rail to make sure left and right it's center. Then we put some tension on it with the jack. We're going to use our 7 16 drill bit to get a couple pilot holes started. Then we're going to drop this out of the way, run some small pilot holes through, and then bump them up to our 7 16 So here's our little dimples that we're going to use for our pilot holes. So we're going to use our uh, shaft built drill press here to make life a little easier. So got to go through a lot of metal, good drill bit, lots of oil, go slow. Got a lot of holes to drill. Don't want to have to buy a bunch of drill bits. So I'm going to grab some cutting oil quick and we'll get started. So we got all of our pilot holes drilled and then we upsized it to our 7 16 drill bit. Got those drilled out. Make sure you're going as straight as possible because with the nut plates that are going to be in the unibody, they're pretty tolerance specific. So just drill as straight as you can. If you have to waller it out just a hair to get a little bit of adjustment out of it, that's okay. We got plenty of metal here to work with. You don't want to go a couple sizes too big though. Um, then we got our one inch holes drilled in our unibody frame. We tried to be cheeky and fish it through with some wire to, you know, do better than the instructions, but just follow the instructions. We learned that the hard way. So you got those cut, drop your nut plates in each side, 
center them through at least one hole. So when we put this up, you can thread the bolt in and then use the bolt to kind of twist the other side. Um, so nut plates are in, we're ready to slap this up. We threw some paint on it just for a rust barrier and we're ready to keep moving forward. Oh, she bit. So then you can twist this a little bit to spin that nut plate inside there to help line up that other one. So we got all of our nut plates in, got all our bolts started, so we're just gonna snug them up, get it all in so we can get the jack out of here, and then we'll torque these later. Next, we're gonna do the spring and shock cross member. So like we said before, we've got the full frame stiffeners, um, so that makes us a little tighter fit, just make sure you're going up even. It'll bow out just a hair and then you can press it up. And you should have existing um, bump stop mount holes here and that's what we're gonna use. We're also double checking. We bumped in here. We had 16 and 3 eighths to the face. So make sure you got the same on both sides. Make sure it's tight to the uniframe. Uh, since we have the frame stiffeners, we're gonna tap ours. If you don't have frame stiffeners, the kit comes with nut inserts. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing. Use a bigger drill bit, get a center hole, drill it out with a pilot, upsize it, and then we'll tap it. So we got our coil spring and shock cross member in. Now we're ready to get all of our control arms in so we can attach our axle and get that hanging. So we're going to get our upper control arms in. Flex joint's going to go at the frame side. You want floor clearance bend pointing down. Make sure you have your grease circ oriented. Nut. Careful with the nut zerk up there. This one's touching the frame. Yours is a little tighter. You can snap them off pretty easy, but shouldn't be an issue if you're paying attention to it. Now time for the beef. Oh. So flex end again at the frame side. Rubber bushing is gonna be on the axle. And this is a tire clearance bend, so you want that pointed up and inward slightly. Make sure you got your grease zerk oriented. And then fight this bolt hole. So you get it in. Come on, hands. There we go. Another thing too to know that you have the right side, your clamping bolts should be on the bottom. Oh, little nugget for you. Let's turn that grease circ. We got this side in, just center up your axle. If you need to move this flex joint, grab you a bar. They are supposed to be super tight. That's how they're designed. Camera guy, can you give that a little push? Which way? Towards me. There you go. Boom. Uppers in. And not everybody's going to be doing a, a one-ton swap in the middle of their four link, so a little easier you do these, uh, these arms one at a time because then you're not fighting the axle like we are. But figured you got it all apart. Might as well throw tons and some unknown tires on. So next in the instructions are the coil springs. We're going to do the shock so that we can hang the axle and get this cart out from under us. So these are designed to be outboard on these. Some people like to try and install them on the inside, and then you got clearance issues. Nice. So we got our axle hanging on its own weight right now. Still gutted. Uh, we still need to do our finish welds after we verify everything. Uh, this charcoal canister here, I don't know about all XJs. I know some of the WJs have them in the 
um, engine bay. Some have them back by the fuel tank. Ours is going to clear. It does get extremely close, but the tires we're going to run, we're going to have to do some stuff with bump stops. If we run into an issue with it later, we will have to relocate that or delete it if the customer doesn't care about a check engine light, but I'll let them make that choice. So now we're going to move on to our coil springs. We got this side installed. We'll show you how to do this side. Um, these have the bump stop extensions. They've got the lower uh, coil spring retainers. So all the goodies all built into your kit here. So these are our bump stop extensions. Um, this would be full length. These are adjustable in one inch increments. So you got three additional that you can add. These are required. That black one's gonna hold our upper isolator. And then we will be running full extension. And these are gonna bolt right through our shock spring tower. Come on. And three quarter inch wrench up top. We'll get that tightened down there. Guten snug. And then we got our actual bump stop, which these are the same bump stops that are in the front of the XJs. Pop her in there. Time for the spring. Now on the lower um, coil spring retainers, we slightly bent the two ends just slightly. Um, and that's just to give us enough room to get our bolt down there. You don't want to overbend them because then you won't have any tension holding them on. These are all tabbed out to bend at different angles, and that's to hug the spring, get that squished to the coil pad, so you can fully release this thing. They're not going anywhere. Cut. This takes a little finagling. That's where you got to be good with your fingers. So we got our bolt nut started on here. This pad is twistable. What you want to do is make sure you're getting the most bite on as much as the spring as you can. So if you got to roll your spring, twist the pad, whatever you got to do. The old flick of the wrist. So we finally got our Sterling 10 and a half housing, we'll call it, installed. Still no carrier gears, any of that in there just yet. Our four link is done. We got our shock towers in, we got our spring tower section done, cross members in, flex joints, all that good stuff. So we're ready to get the gearing going on this, move on to our next portion of the build. Um, still got some hidden goodies coming up for you guys with this project. So stay tuned to the project, like and subscribe. Thanks for hanging out.